Hey there, it's two o'clock in the morning and I can't sleep because my second daughter's just been born. I couldn't be there and I'm dying to meet her. So I'm going to kill a bit of time and maybe help a couple of people by making this quick little tutorial on how to do these fun little VFX things that I came up with the other night. And at the end of the video, I'll be explaining how to render Bloom in Eevee because it took me like an hour or so of searching on the internet to figure out how to actually do that. So let's get some pretty little particles popping around the place. Okay, so first things first, let's get rid of this cube and let's get rid of this light because we don't need those for this. We're going to need to add in a mesh to emit some particles and I'm going to add an icosphere, nice and round. And I'm going to scale that by 0.5 and I'm going to press Control A and apply its scale. So that's all locked in. Then we need a shape to be our actual particle. So let's add in another icosphere, but this time I'm going to open up the viewport operator, drop its subdivisions to one so it actually looks like a particle. Then let's give them some awesome names. This is the most important step. So let's call this the party cule and let's call the emitter the party cule later. Right now I'm gonna quickly whiz through some particle settings. So let's hide the particle itself and focus on the emitter. I'm going to first set my output frame rate to 60 and my end frame to be 60 more than the start frame, so that's 61 and then hop into particle settings and add some particle settings. I'm gonna set the end frame to the same as the start frame, and I'm gonna set my lifetime to 60 so that these particles die over the space of one second. You could use whatever frame rate you want, but I want this little effect to last for 60 seconds, so my lifetime is the same as my frame rate. Then we're gonna change the randomness to 0.75, so almost none of the particles will die at around the same time. And under source, I'm gonna change emit from faces to volume because that's just how I prefer it. I'm going to uncheck even distribution so that things are even more random. Then I'll move into velocity and we'll change the normal velocity to two meters a second and give that some randomization as well. So we'll set that to 0.25 to give it a bit of difference. And then we'll check rotation so that these things will actually spin. And I'm going to set this random to 0.25 as well. So everything's nice and random so we don't really have the same thing going on all the time and then i'm gonna hop into render i'm gonna change halo to object because we want to be rendering that particle that we created in the first place i'm gonna uncheck show emitter so that the emitter itself doesn't appear in the render and then under field weights i'm going to set gravity to 0.1 so that we're not really being affected by gravity too much now when i press play we should get some particles flying around the place just how I like them. There we go, that's pretty good. I think I might change the scale to be 0.025 so they're a bit smaller and then we'll randomize that scale as well with 0.25 so we've got some nice difference in the size of the particles. Okay, now I very strongly recommend that you come through all of these particle settings and play with them. Just mess around with them to your heart's content. I can lose hours mucking around with these. We can do all sorts of fun stuff like shifting the object aligned velocity to shoot the particles out the side, maybe not at light speed, but you can shoot them out the side. You can do all sorts of fun stuff with them with that. We could also further randomize everything by tweaking our randomized values. And a moment ago, I actually forgot that I wanted this to be a fluid simulation with a mass of 500 kilograms and multiplying that mass with size because that's how I originally had this effect set up. And I just forgot to do that a moment ago. I also forgot to drop the stiffness and viscosity to zero. Now, fluid simulation type kind of tends to make the particles clump together. And I'm not going to go through all of these settings. You should just play with them to find the effects that you want and just have fun with them. You can be really creative with particles. They're a really cool thing to play with. Something else you can do as well is you can alter your shape to create your particle, make your particles pop out in different ways. And yeah, so it's a, this whole relationship between the particle settings and the shape that's actually emitting them. It's all good fun and I really enjoy messing around with them. Okay, now it's time to start actually setting things up to be rendered. So I'm going to grab my camera. I'm going to clear its uh, rotation and location by pressing Alt R and Alt G. And then I'm going to make, point it straight down onto the emitter. And I'm going to press zero on my numpad to so that we're looking through our camera. And then under output, I'm going to make 
the resolution a square and then I'm going to tweak the Z value here, tweak the distance of the camera so that I can fit all the particles inside this square here, a little bit more, that looks about right. Then we're going to need a material for our particles. So let's pause this with some particles out and switch into the shading layout. And let's add a material to our particle here. And I'm gonna get rid of this principled BSDF because I want this to be an emissive material, so I want it to give off light. And I don't want this to just be any material. I want this to be a material that's going to randomize the each particle's color. So all the particles are gonna be a random color. So to do that, I'm going to add in an object info node. So we get the object info. I'm also going to need a color ramp. So let's add in a color ramp. And I'm also going to want the emissive shader. Let's plug these all together for now. And we plug random into random from the object into info into the color ramp. Now here's a part where you can get a bit creative yourself. You can kind of add as many points to your color ramp as you like, and then set them to a variety of different shades. I'm going to set all of these to be sort of off RGB. So like nice pastely colored RGB colors. And now we have a nice little palette of colors in there. I'm going to change this to constant. So we have a constant value. We're always going to be getting one of these colors. You can mess around with ease, linear, tweak, tweak all of this stuff as much as you like. This is just what I want this to be. So yeah, we've got that. And I think I'm probably going to increase the emission strength to around 30, so they're nice and shiny. Doesn't look too great in there, but it will look quite good once we get some further render settings on it. So let's hop back to our layout and set our viewport shading to rendered so we can see what's going on. And then over in the render properties, we're gonna turn on the bloom and make these particles shine. I'm going to drop my threshold on this bloom slightly, reduce the radius as well, and I'm going to increase the intensity a bit. Now, you can do whatever you want with these bloom settings to get it looking right, but that's what I'm going to set mine to. Then I'm going to go down to Film. I'm going to tick Transparent so that the background here is rendered as transparent because I want to be able to alpha over this video onto other video files. So that's that and then onto color management I don't like filmic so I'm going to change that to standard then we need to talk about video encoding settings these get complicated very quickly so I'm just going to jump through and not really explain what they do because I could do a whole video just on what video encoding settings are and how they work so we're going to set this to FFmpeg video I'm going to drop down encoding I'm going to set the container to QuickTime and the video codec to QT animation gonna set the encoding speed to slowest, the keyframe interval to 15. And I'm not gonna worry about max B frames, but I will double up the bit rate so that we get a nice quality little particle video. And I mustn't forget to set the color to RGBA so that we get the alpha channel. This is why I'm using a QuickTime container because QuickTime and the QT animation these, the container and this codec together will support an alpha channel on our video. That's almost ready to render now, but if we were to render this as an image quickly now, you'll notice that the particle itself is actually glowing bright green in the middle there. So to stop that, I'm going to turn off this particle's ability to render. So this, the actual particle isn't going to render, only the particles from the emitter will render. Now I'd love to be able to say that this is ready to render, but unfortunately I want to render this in Eevee and Eevee does not like rendering bloom. If I was to render this right now into an into a video file, all I'd get is a whole bunch of white dots with no color and no bloom. So to fix that, I'm going to go into my layer properties and I'm going to turn on bloom. Making sure that's on, I'm then going to jump over to the compositing workspace, check use nodes at the top there, and I'm going to start adding in a few more nodes. We're going to need to add in a color ramp. We are also going to need a math node. 
and set alpha node. So, first up, let's do the color ramp. I'm going to connect the bloom col there, which appeared on the render layers since we turned it on in the scene render layers. So we get the bloom pass, which will come through there. We plug that into the factor of the color ramp. We then take the image from the color ramp and plug that into the add node. And we take the alpha of the render layers and also plug that into the add node. Let's shuffle these down a bit, make some space. And we take the output of the add node and plug it into the alpha of the set alpha node. Then we take our render layers image and plug that into the image. And then we plug that into the output node, the composite node. So this is going to essentially reapply our bloom to the rendered video file. It's a little bit complicated to explain why this works or how this works, but it does. I prefer to have the color ramp set to ease and I drop this down to about 0.275-ish. We'll be tweaking that in a moment. Let's add in a viewer node there and we can plug in our final result to that as well. And then if we just render a quick image, we get a sample behind our nodes there of what it looks like. And we can tweak the color ramp accordingly to get it just where we want it with just the right amount of bloom. With that all set up, now we are just about ready to render out our video file. So let's hop over to our output properties yet again, and we can set a folder for this file to render to. I'm just gonna dump this into my videos folder. Once we've done that, we're going to want to go to the particle settings on the emitter and open up the cache and click bake. If we don't click bake, these particles will sometimes get very confused and they won't render properly. They'll try and reset themselves partway through the effect, partway through the clip. So now that we've done that, we can click render animation and we'll spew out this lovely particle effect into a video file. When that's done, I can open up a quick video editing workspace. I can add the movie that we just rendered out there and you can see it in action. It's Alfred, it's got all the particles, it's got all the bloom, it looks lovely. So that's pretty great. Now this video file will look terrible in VLC and Windows Media Player. Anything, any, any like software that plays videos isn't going to like it. It's fine in editing software because editing software is kitted out to handle this video codec. Because we're using QuickTime with Qt RLE slash Qt Animation, just me media players in general don't like that. If you don't need to have the transparent background on this, then that's fine. You don't need to worry about it. Media players should handle it, handle it just, just like any other video. But I specifically made this for video editing for VFX, for video effects. So it needs to have a transparent background so it can alpha over other things. So I've used QuickTime, Qt Animation, and media players just don't like this combination. So, I mean, Windows Media Player won't even play this. It would just say, nope, this is a corrupted video file. We can't play it. But it's playing fine in here. It plays fine in Resolve, and it should play fine in Premiere, although I don't use any Adobe software, so I can't really test it. But I do have Resolve, and I know it works in there. So yeah, that's just about all we need to cover in this video. The only other thing you could do is if you want to, at any point in time, you could come back here you could clear your cache and change to a different seed on the particle settings. So you could have all sorts of different colors going at different angles, just randomly. Yeah, just don't forget, you can always change it up so you can have lots of different ones going at once just by rendering out several different video files. And that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching and I hope you found it useful. I've stayed up all night recording and editing this because I couldn't sleep and now I get to meet my new daughter in a couple of hours, which is awesome. 
So make sure you subscribe because I'm going to be doing loads more Blender tutorials and guides over the next year, uh, mostly focused on character animation, but I will be branching off and doing more stuff with particles, fluids and smoke, maybe some sculpting, who knows what I'll get up to. But yeah, probably hit that bell icon too because my upload schedule may be pretty sporadic and I have no idea really when I'm going to be able to record. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. I need to say a massive thank you to all of my patrons. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be able to provide all of this content for free. So you should definitely consider becoming one of them because the more patrons that I get, the more people that support me, the more time I can put into providing Blender add-ons and videos and tutorials and guides and all sorts of great stuff that just helps everybody out.